of the hospital and they say, oh, I gotta take you to x ray. Yeah. And you end up across the street, you know. So, for the first time, we are finally making this like the rest of the world. The ER is, continu uh, the radiology is continuation of ER. The only feature, though, here is that we will have the first two CT scans ever. The GE will, you know, we're buying or we're leasing them from GE. They are the light speed, but the capacity of the slicing, the number, I don't know. I can tell you that it's definitely two or three jumps from the light speed that we have. So if we have 164, this might be 364. So. Do we have any idea how it would compare to other hospitals in the area? And probably nobody will have those yet. Okay. So and those are the one C that those are our CT scans. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, the one that can give you that would be Dr. Miles because he's been really entrenched into the research and development of the particular CT and what it's supposed to do. So he can give you that. I do have some information on it, but... We can talk to Dr. Miles, too. Yeah. Good. Great. Yeah, he would be a lot better That'd to... Be have. <clears throat> this corridor here will be the corridor for the clinicians or the radiologists and the technologists that they will operate the machines. And this side and the other side will be the patients. We went back to the traditional method which is preserving the privacy of the patient when you come in and do diagnostic testing. Uh, the industry went one time modern and they had regular corridors and everybody now is going back to the best solution is the technologist and the physician here, the patient come from the other side and the doctors go from this side. So you preserve the privacy and you don't parade these people throughout the whole world. And we succeeded to do that. Not only that, we actually made an area right here. So when the patient comes in, because remember now radiology and ER are together, so that means inpatient diagnostic will take place here. So when they come in, if they're coming in from their patient rooms, nine out of 10 cases that they have to wait 10, 15 minutes before they get them on the table. Because they call, the technician call, okay, bring 902, we're ready to do their CTs. They come here and then they're still working on it. So what we did is we created a five bed holding area was all the amenities for a patient room. So if they're on oxygen, they come here, there's oxygen, if they're in vacuum, there's vacuum, there's the air, if they've, everything is ready here. There's all the nurse call and code blue, everything is here, so they will be here and they can be observed from the window. You know, so we, we felt that this is necessary to do. To your right is another two x-ray rooms similar to the other two, but that will be strictly for inpatient because that is the radiology department. So all of radiology in this wing now will be right here? Except we're gonna leave some upstairs still. Interventional radiology will stay, which is special procedure, drainage, you know, biopsies, and things that they do day to day. Yeah. I don't see why would they wanna move them down here. It wouldn't be a good, because there is a lot of things go along with that. You got prep, holding, and recovering because their procedure are similar to, um, you know, it's semi-invasive, but it's similar to interventional cardiology. Pretty much they overlap. Mm -hmm. They don't play together though. Yeah. Everybody has to have his own place. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> before I forget, there is a way that we can drop this. You just need to know. Oh, there is? Yeah. Well, okay. you know, I looked at those. They wouldn't be going. Okay. So we, we can do it here and we can do it on the other side. Oh, they'd be happy about that. Yeah. Well, the other two we haven't done yet, so. Okay. Uh, where next? We need to look at a mock-up room, right? Yeah, and, and the, the that's really, Jacob, what when, when we took the tour last time, um, and Katie and I were here, your explanation of how you've used the mock-up room, why you built it, um, the uniqueness of the table that you designed, I mean, all that stuff. We're really going to go up to the patient room and do that, but I'd like to show you the exam room and okay. the ER exam room. Uh, it's not used yet. Yeah, it's not used. Hmm. 
still smells new, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The rubber smells good. New car. Yep. New car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the first feature here is, of course, is the area. The square footage of this. It is big enough, not only that it will take a complete bed setup, but it's also complete for the caregiver to maneuver around the area. The loved one, they could be here while the patient is being taken care of. And why did we do it that way? Because we know from the past, we know from the surveys, we know from satisfaction. Is Nine out of ten hospitals, once the patient goes to the ER room, ER room they, they want nobody to be there. Well, it's true in most of cases, but there are cases where your loved one needs to see you. They need you to be there. A mom with her child, right. she just can't sit outside on her child in here. She wants to be with that child. You know, a person was his dad, and his dad is old and frail and is confused and scared to death being in the hospital. Well, he needs his son or his daughter to be there just to be comforted. We put all these considerations here. We didn't leave that. Uh, another thing we did was the efficiency. Always the efficiency is an issue in an ER because to solve the problem, you want to be in and out. You want that to be fast. So what would come to mind is try to give the clinician everything they need without moving back and forth. I'm going to get this. I'm going to see that. I mean, well, it's all in here. We succeeded to put it all in an integrated head wall system so they don't have to leave. And what would those features be? Lots and lots of features. All what they use on regular basis from their blood pressure measurement devices to you don't see that checking their ear and nose. All that is coming in. All will be hanging. We didn't leave even the wire management system. We created one and we hang in here so there is nothing to trip on. They can wrap the wire in here. Their phone system, it's all integrated within the bed docker gloves. It's right in here, okay? This thing is not really the right one. The right one is upstairs. Uh, IV, IV can move, you will see upstairs. It's better than this. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's better upstairs. This was the first try. We fixed that. The monitor is right here. She can see everything, all the vital signs. Uh, we doubled the oxygen air vacuum, both sides. Not necessarily because we want to double it just in case one break. No, because if we actually have to have two in case of a disaster, we can put two patients in here. There's no problem. But also we are allowing the fact that if that patient needs a ventilator, okay, and it's, uh, you know, it's easier to get it from the right-hand side. You got it on the right-hand side. Easier for the left. You got it on the left. The nurse call is integrated in here in that wall. So the code blue is integrated in that wall. Explain yes, thank you. That's a wire management system. So if there is a lot of wires, all what you do is that you just coil it around. Wow. There were simple things that we had to look real hard and find a solution for it. We didn't want to leave anything unturned. Like I said, I always joke about the only thing I couldn't really make work was just get the ice to be the ice dispensing. But you like tried. But we did try. I know you did. Yeah. We did try. And it's still in the work, actually. They're still working on it. And they might come up with a system. Uh, vacuum bottles, we recessed it inside the head wall so it will be out of the way. Uh, the surface, all the surfaces we did here is cleanable surfaces. There's no place for bacteria or anything to grow. We thought of that too. We figured that that's a, a key issue. Every exam room have a hand washing sink with wrist blade and a goose neck, which is the standard code requirement for a regular patient room. We put it on the exam room too. So you don't have, you know, there's a distance to wash. You can do with your elbow and then your hand. I think that's a great feature in addition to the sanitizing, you know, alcohol. So we have that, we have it here, we have it here as you exit. We also did the privacy curtain just in case that the nurse wants to, you know, to check the patient or the patient getting undressed. Another thing that we did is that you see these doors are not really in every exam room in the world. These are typically, you will find those typically in the uh, ICU room setup. Well, we, we elected to do all our rooms because of the visibility that we were talking about, the 360 degree.